So today I started reading the manga for Blue Giant for the first time. I, I have the Omnibus, which is the first two volumes. I'm almost done with that. I'll be finishing the, I think, the last chapter or two that I have left of that once I'm done here. But before I go to bed and read that or whatever, I, I, I want to talk about some of the things I'm initially feeling from reading this so far. I absolutely love the kind of story that this is setting up in general. The This type of story is not necessarily, like, original. It's very basic and common, but also something I really, really enjoy and don't mind the fact that it's doing this. And that is that you have a protagonist. Usually it's kind of like a shonen protagonist, although I don't know if this is necessarily be considered shonen. But it kind of has the same kind of beat where you have a main character protagonist guy who has these very grandiose, I guess, goals in life. And it gets so much so that he is pretty much devoting nearly everything he can towards this goal. Almost to a detriment to things that he should be focusing on. So so to, to clarify, Blue Giant is about a kid who falls in love with jazz music. He's exposed to it, and he absolutely loves it. It's difficult for him to explain exactly why, and a lot of people that try to ask him about it or talk with him about jazz, they just don't get it compared to him. He feels like people something that people just have to listen to and then they'll just get it but they they don't because they don't understand it in certain ways i i'm not sure there's just a lot of people i think in real life don't really understand or see the appeal in jazz i'm not like a huge jazz i can i, I guess i listen to some jazzy kind of songs but i'm not like a huge like jazz enthusiast I'm like, but that might also just because i'm not a huge music guy in general i like what i like and that's pretty much i'm like i'm not a big music buff or anything like that but i do know enough having listened to people who seem way smarter than me about music that a lot of people that don't really know anything about music and then they listen to jazz they think it's very unstructured or like there's no method to it and that it pretty much to a lot of people feels like it's all just like freestyling do whatever Whatever the fuck you want. People who seem to know more about music would disagree with that. There is definitely a lot of stuff that goes into it. A lot of it seems to be that like people will do some differences to what they're supposed to be with the music when it comes to jazz, it seems. But that's more like either an emotional thing or like a bit of a part with a solo, things like that to that nature. There is still kind of like a structure to it and an overall like method to the madness in a way. And the story starts off with the main character's name is Miyamoto Dai, I believe. Hold on, I have it next to me. Yeah, Miyamoto Dai. That's his name. He plays the tenor saxophone. And at first, he is kind of of the same mindset that, like, he doesn't learn jazz traditionally. He pretty much listened to jazz with his friend who took him to try it out once. And the friend was like, D he just didn't get it. He was uninterested. But Dai was on the side. He was falling in love with it right next to him. The next thing he knew by the time he met up, he's like, hey, you remember that one time you took him to that concert? Yeah, I bought a saxophone, I've been playing it all the fucking time. Like, every single day. I'm going out, like, towards this river, and I'm just playing my heart out. And he goes crazy. And he's playing it so much, he's, like, going through reeds? Like, what a, a wood part that goes to the mouthpiece where you blow on it? He's going through that at, like, an insane rate. He's spending so much money because he's playing it so much and wearing out these reeds so much. I, I don't know, like, the normal amount, but it, I think in the manga, they tried to make it clear when he goes to the music shop to buy more, and the music guy's like, wait, you went through all this yourself? It, this isn't, like, you buying these for or, like your school band this is all just for you what the fuck you are fucking crazy man like he 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 really gets devoted to that really quick but he's not learning it traditionally so that just means he's just trying to he's just playing things like he's listening to some jazz music that he really likes he's trying to copy them and i believe in some ways he was like pretty okay with copying like the music he was hearing but he's mostly trying to like freestyle learn a lot of it he's not really getting any of the theory of it but in his like way of imitating what he's listening to and trying to like get it to match as much as he can and trying to figure out what makes things easier for him he kind of accidentally stumbles into a lot of concepts that are pretty good to learn it seemed when he 
talks to an expert finally and he tries to help him out to get better he pretty much finds out that you're doing some things wrong you definitely learned how to do these things wrong but because of how often you've been doing it and how dedicated you've been towards it you've kind of stumbled into doing things correctly eventually and he's kind of really really good at certain parts because of how dedicated he is and he just hasn't realized like how good some of the stuff that he's gotten to actually is i i forget the certain terms that the guy who's like his coach was like speaking towards but it's it's just like really interesting that kind of stuff to where like he is so dedicated he's doing this so much that he's just kind of accidentally stumbling into the right things to do which i guess if you are copying like people better than you people that you want to emulate that kind of thing would come naturally and in general i think when you are learning um anything that is probably the way you should learn these kind of things you know you can take classes but a lot of the time you will at some point just be learning from the people before you because you don't need to reinvent the wheel you don't need to rediscover techniques you can learn from people who've already figured out how to do this stuff so like if you want to get good at art like if you want to get better at like drawing manga or if you want to start drawing manga just look at manga that you've read try to emulate the style maybe try to like do panels the same way they do or you know don't plagiarize or anything like that but you learn from how they do things pick out the things that you like from it and try to expand on it in your own way and the same thing was kind of happening with Dai in the story of Blue Giant he's going through learning from these greats that he's listening to constantly pretty much trying to like copy which I, I guess is kind of easier with music because one of the goals with music is to just perform a song exactly how it is but you know with jazz you obviously want to throw in your own little style to it and with him his is just he wants to i'm not sure if the manga is emulating it right but it seems like he just wants to be as loud as possible he just really wants to express himself it feels almost like kind of like he's he's saying i'm here with it like like he's he's he wants to be the loudest one ever and he wants to be the greatest jazz musician ever the greatest jazz player and he wants to be the loudest with a saxophone it feels like he he his first gig which the guy at the music store sets up for him he's really excited for it but he's also never played with anybody else let alone he's he's rarely played in front of people at that point and now he suddenly has a gig where he's playing in front of people and he has to play with a group there you know a group that does piano drums singing all that he, he lets them know pretty quickly that he's very new to this he doesn't really understand a lot of the actual theory with it. He, he practices on his own he's very much an amateur and he's also very new to working with a group he lets them know that pretty much immediately but to the extent of how awkward it was going to be did not really come to light until they start performing because everything seemed okay at first. He was a little, I think, awkward at the beginning, and then he kind of caught up to where he should be because thanks to one of the other players directing him on the stage. He, he, he kind of got in the groove, it seemed, but then his time came for a solo. So he was struggling a bit throughout the main performance, and then he finally gets to his solo, where he's pretty much given the okay to do whatever he wants. And his immediately thought is to be as loud, loud as possible. And guys that are in the bar immediately come complain about it because they just want to relax and have a couple drinks they don't need him blaring blasting their fucking ears out this upsets the people that are in there they vocally complain and then some of the members of the i think band and or the the guy who owns the place they pretty much ask him to leave and he just doesn't want to talk with the the music store guy who tries to console him afterwards he's just like i'm just gonna go because he understands he utterly failed that like that that was a big crushing moment for him it was a little a little much to just ask him to leave over that i think it was a little much that he didn't have a chance to like rehearse with them or have some kind of opportunity to like try to perform with somebody else beforehand to get used to that first that part was kind of weird for me but but in general he he understands at that moment that he has failed and it's at this point that he you you think you'd just be at his lowest and he is kind of depressed over it and it kind of sticks with him but then you you realize he's not really taking this so much as like this is going to ruin everything i'm just never going to do this again that was so embarrassing he takes that moment and he says to himself this is nothing and that's 
really, really, because he acknowledges constantly that that was a big failure for him. But he's also being very, like, he's not giving up. He's very determined in that he does not see this as the end. He, he sees this more as a massive learning experience. And that's really what a lot of failures are, especially when you're actually getting into things in practice. Learning is all about failure. If nobody has anything bad to say about what you did, you might think that that's a good thing. That might think you did everything right. But on the other hand, you have nowhere to go to grow. And that's a big problem. You can learn a lot more from your failures than you can from your successes, at least in, in my opinion and from my experience on some things. So like if you're playing chess and you want to get better at chess, you can learn theory. You can study that. You can also lose to better players and then understand analyzing why you lost. And this kind of goes for like a lot of games in general. You do this for that too. You get this for almost everything. You, you can attempt something and then study what went wrong with it. If something did go wrong with it, or if you succeeded, study it and go, did I make any mistakes? And if so, where could I have improved it? And if you do so, you will be able to grow vastly. It's a lot easier to point out things that went wrong from failures than you can from successes. And so I, I was really, really glad that that was his kind of mindset with it. I wasn't sure if we were going to have a whole depressed arc that was going to happen where maybe he considers dropping jazz. He was really nervous going into the gig because I think the store owner who had suggested the gig to him he said you do this performance and if they like your performance you get to do it for three more nights or something like that and he says well what if they don't like it and he says if they don't like it you're done and it's i think he took that as sounding like this is my moment if i fuck this up then it's all over when in reality that's never ever the case you should never have any kind of expectation when you're starting anything that you're going to be great at it and there's a scene later on and there's some people that are performing on the street and they're not good but you know it's it doesn't really matter if they're not good they're amateurs they're still learning they're trying to do it to survive because they're on the street making money probably or they're maybe they're just having fun with it and they're just trying to learn Th this guy walks up and he's i think he was like a little drunk or something this guy walks up and he says you guys suck he, he just flat out goes up to the same god damn you guys suck right and it's like man what the fuck but die is nearby he sees he hears that happen and he's like so what if they suck it doesn't matter. It's, it means there's like room for them to improve. Nobody is really good when they start. They need to just do their best. I'm sure they can improve over time. Like it's, it, it, who cares if they suck? It doesn't matter. And in my mind, sucking at something can actually be a good thing because there's so much more you can learn. It seems from what I hear from people that are more professionals in certain industries, especially when it comes to art, it is very difficult at a certain point to improve more. Some people have very much difficulties when it comes to certain ceilings in their skill cap. They reach you like a certain like skill set and then finding things to improve past that. It's difficult for people to find out where to improve next on some things. I could think that I'm really, really good with coloring and shading of uh, certain art styles, right? I could think I'm really, really great with that, but there might be some parts of it that I'm not even considering because I just don't really understand things to be certain ways. This is kind of hard for me to vocalize, I guess, but there's like, I'm trying to find a good example for this, but the, the, I, the gist of what I'm trying to get at is that things can improve but at a certain point, you might have difficulty identifying where to improve next. And when that happens, it can be very demoralizing, even if what you're doing looks and feels all right. It can be demoralizing because, you know, in a way you feel like you're not growing anymore. Maybe grow that growth was a part of the fun of that task you were doing. Like maybe a lot of people might really, really like art at first because they're learning about it. They just want to have fun with it. But afterwards, when they learn everything about it. Maybe it starts to feel just like a job to them. It feels very formulaic and they don't really have as much fun with it anymore as they used to, you know? Maybe they get in a certain mindset and it's very hard for them to break these kind of rules that they learned, even though they can express themselves in whatever kind of ways they want. These kind of things can be difficult and it's really cool that Blue Giant kind of tackles these issues, not through like very preachy, demanding 
kind of long extended story arcs. They're like very brief interactions that this guy will have, but they have such a like big impact and big message that's like very subtly conveyed. And it's, it's awesome how it makes you feel that way about these things. It's like, it's great. It's so good. And again, I'm not much of a musician at all. I, I think I actually did play saxophone when I was very, very young, although I don't remember much of it. I think I played the trumpet first and then the saxophone. And this was all for school, by the way. So I, I never actually owned the instrument. It was like rented for the school or something like that. I was never really into any instruments, but I did think I played the saxophone at some point. I think we did like some school concert thing where we played like Star Wars songs or something like that. I forget. Not a big music like buff, uh, especially not when it comes to jazz. I've, I've always kind of thought it was weird music manga being a thing. It feels like you're missing like a whole crucial point of being a music story is it's it's a manga you can't listen to the music and it'd be very awkward if you're like listening and especially when it comes to jazz there's no there's not many there's some lyrics with jazz but there's not too much and this is something that they talk about in the story as well at least from what they've said there's not too much lyrics when it comes to jazz most of it is very instrumental when you have it like that and you're you're reading a manga about it it, it seems like a weird kind of concept because you're like i'm just not gonna get to hear any of this music you're just gonna see this guy blowing into a sax and you're gonna see those poses and that's pretty much that's pretty much it but the point of the story is not the music itself the music itself is a vehicle the saxophone itself is a vehicle for the overall goal and message which like i said the kind of story that we're telling here is nothing new it's always been done it it's done in like mostly a lot of shonen are good examples of this luffy wants to be king of the pirates he will dedicate whatever he can make all the friends he can to be able to do so bakuman centers around manga creators that want to do whatever they can focus on and dedicate their days and lives Lives into creating manga, getting a series serialized, and then getting an anime adaptation of that serialization. And they dedicate so much towards it. My Hero Academia, you have Deku, who wants to be the new All Might. And he, he wants to be, like, one of the number one... He wants to be the number one hero. The, these are just stories where these people just dedicate everything towards it. And it's easy to focus on these kind of stories when it comes to anime. In reality, it's very, very hard to dedicate yourself like that. It's very hard to say, all right, I'm going to focus on becoming a competitive esports player. I'm going to drop everything else in my life. I'm not going to socialize with friends. I'm just, I'm not going to watch any TV shows. I'm not going to watch random YouTube videos. I'm only going to be focusing 110% on esports. It's going to be mechanic drills. It's going to be analysis. It's going to be working tactically with teams. It's going to be a bunch of scrims. It's going to be dedicated to all that. There's not many cases, especially with all the different unique uh, situations people are in it's very unrealistic to think that these kind of stories are capable of happening in real life although you know you can have these cases where people dedicate literally all their free time towards certain hobbies so whatever they have they just focus on that if they can uh, but you also have kind of a culture that's going on now especially with the growing generation where people don't really focus on one thing for very long kind of like a little all over the place hyperactive hyper fixated in some ways this week i might be really really focused on youtube content and i I might really, really want to dive into that for a while. The next week, I might really want to dive into just reading manga and consuming anime. I, I don't really want to write anything about it. I just want to consume it. Maybe the next week, I want to focus on learning Japanese and nothing else. Maybe the next week, I want to, I don't know, learn a new sport. And I just want to go play that with some friends or something like that. Like, these are things that'll happen. Or, like, you'll be splitting yourself out too much. Oh, I want to play, do, like, this hour of this game every week. I want to do, like, this hour of uh, learning Japanese. I want to do all this. And at some point, it's like, okay, I'm doing all this all over the place. Am I actually, like, gaining everything from this because I'm just spreading myself so thin? Like, do I need to just stop and just focus time on this one thing or something like that? So so what I'm trying to get at here is that this story about a protagonist focusing on one goal and just focusing on that one goal alone, it's not uncommon in anime especially. It's also, like, kind of unrealistic with reality. But the messages associated with that are the key things to factor in with this because not everybody could just give up all their time to become a saxophone player not everybody can not everybody can become the number one whatever they want but the messages of watching fictional character do it the messages that are conveyed in that journey there's a whole bunch of different themes with with me especially there's a whole bunch of stuff that resonate with me that whole learning experience from the beginning getting used to it seeing how far you've come along in all this time since you started out what people are willing to sacrifice and how much how you should think about approaching these kind of mindsets it's all really in-depth 
and really complex and super interesting, even though it seems so simple. This guy didn't even learn sheet music. He, he doesn't even know how to read sheet music, I think, until the end of, like, volume two or something like that. He, he just has never learned sheet music. He's just been playing all this time, every single day, all the time, spending all these money to maintain his saxophone, of which he seems very serious about learning, but has never tried to, like, formally learn it. And a part of that might just be because he's more just learning it to, like, just express himself and have fun, but he also seems very dedicated and very serious about becoming the greatest jazz player in the world. And so when you have that kind of mindset, you read that and you'll go, well, this guy sh probably should be like formally studying it in some way or like learning some of the theory about it. And so it's kind of a little frustrating when you're reading this at first and you're seeing like he's just practicing. Mind you see he's very dedicated with that. But as soon as he interacts with like literally anybody that actually knows about music or has studied music or has like been appreciating it long, like maybe slightly longer than him, he's very much like not approaching these things how you probably should, but it's kind of still inspiring how he's doing it. Because yes, there's formal ways you could teach these things, but it gets weird when you're institutionalizing it, I guess, or like if it's formulaic what you end up with. Uh, there's just so much about Blue Giant that I'm incredibly vibing with. And it's just, it's so subtle and it's like really moving messages and you really grow to feel and connect with Miyamoto Dai in this. Even if you have like no inkling at all uh, about saxophone or if you don't really give a shit about music, you could still relate to to his kind of journey and his learning process and his growth. His growth especially is always, always a refreshing thing to feel, at least for me, throughout his experience. He's practicing his heart out on the saxophone by the riverbank. And then a pro meets up with him for the first time and he's like, hey, you're not good, but you're doing some things well. You have a lot of potential. You just need some formal learning, but you shouldn't be forgetting the ways that you've been doing it already. You should just be learning some things that could vastly improve how you're doing things. So one of the things I think I remembered was like he wasn't blowing into his read the proper way. With how he was wrapping his lips around the, the, the mouthpiece, he was letting a lot of air escape the sides of his mouth when he was like blowing or breathing or whatever. And so just from teaching him that, e even though he was doing it wrong before, he was very, very loud without that. So it's kind of like, you know, the weighted training clothes are off. Now that he's able to do that, he's much able to get much louder, much easier. And because he was already a pretty fucking loud saxophone player already, now he's just like going crazy with it. So like his informal learning wasn't necessarily bad. It just kind of made his journey a little bit more difficult. But in a way, that might have been a good thing for him because he was so dedicated for it. He was just practicing like the, the wrong way that kind of when he did learn the correct way that made it easier, it like enhanced things a lot. But that's not necessarily always a great thing because like one of the other things he did at some point was he was trying to play his saxophone even in like the the worst hot melting summer day he is like sweating his ass off even though he's still playing it he's taking his shirt off he's drenched in sweat trying to like uh, dunk water or something or something like that i don't know somebody comes up to him while he's trying to play he's like what are you do? you're ruining your instrument here man he's like what do you mean he's like your saxophone's metal and you're out on uh, in uh, like under the very hot japanese sun that's like fucking with the metal, expanding, con contracting it, whatever the, the the physics of how these these things would expand or whatever are. You, you, you could actually ruin your, your instrument if you're forcing yourself like this. And also, you're kind of dying physically trying to do it like this. So maybe you should chill. Maybe you should fucking chill. Some things you could do wrong, but like it might turn out to be a good thing when you learn the correct way, because it just means you're now just enhancing the way that you were doing it before. But another way is doing things wrong and learning things the wrong way could be a bad thing, which is kind of similar to when I was talking about RPG Maker in that video I did, which has been controversial because of just the nature of, I guess, what I was arguing about. People just want to blame the developer for it and they don't want to blame the engine. The main thing that I was always arguing about with that video is just that the engine itself isn't bad it does the job it's supposed to do but the problem is because of the way it does it it kind of instills bad mindsets into the beginning developers that use it 
that's not necessarily the fault of the engine, but it is definitely a big factor that results in these kind of similar RPG Maker projects getting created. I'm not going to get into that long debate here. The same thing can go if you're learning things in certain ways, and it's a detriment to how you should be learning these things. So, so we have this kind of understanding of Lou Giant now, that he was learning things wrong, sometimes learning that wrong way turns out to be something that helped him out when he learned the correct way. Other times, it was just a very bad mindset that he needs to get out of because it could be very, very bad, but he self-taught himself that way. This is kind of an important lesson for a lot of people to learn about a lot of things, and that should be something that you should keep in mind. And it's something I try to keep in mind a lot these days, too, especially when it comes to that second part. Learning things in certain ways, you have to be able to accept at some point when the way you've been doing things before, even if it feels easier to you, you have to be able to accept when that's wrong. You have to be able to accept, hey, the way I'm shading these things, even if I like it or it feels easier for me, it looks like shit when it comes to like art. If it looks like shit, but I just don't want to do any other shading because this is the easiest one for me. At some point, you have to accept that it looks like shit and learn a different way to shade it. It's not to say you have to abandon it forever. I guess in this case, we're talking about examples to where this mindset of how you're shading is literally holding you back and teaching you bad ideas. And so, yeah, that was an important takeaway from Blue Giant. It reminds me with how, you know, its premise is set up of main character following a a dream following it so hard dedicating everything to it it reminded me of an anime that i didn't expect i would like as much as i have it's one of my favorites smile down the runway which i had no clue it would resonate to with me as much as it did because it has to deal with the fashion industry from both the perspective of a runway model and a fashion designer i didn't expect to connect with that at all because i don't give a shit about that i don't really care too much about my own appearance personally because i'm a computer guy i i just focus on the logic of things i'm staying home all the time for the most part i don't really have to deal with a lot of that or at least i would like to not deal with a lot of that that said the the fashion industry in that series is more of a tool to convey the message of the story which is all about chasing your dreams and how much you want to dedicate towards that. You have a runway model who is just too short. It seems like it is like crucial for you to be a certain size for that industry, especially if you're a runway model. So she reached a certain height. It was like really tall when she was young, but that turned out to be as tall as she was going to grow. She never reached the height that she needed to in order to become, I think, a, a, a Paris model or so, a, a model in France or something like that, which I guess is like the big runway or something like that but she still wanted to find a way to be a well-known model and then meanwhile along with her journey we have the journey of a guy who is trying to get into the fashion design world he's mostly just a, a high school student who i believe was attending the same high school as that girl uh, but he was in like his own little fashion club which is pretty much just him sewing random like fabrics together that they had they were all like hand-me-down, like donation things or something like that. He's making some interesting stuff, but it's all very various cheap donated fabrics and it's very amateurish in general. They kind of do like a, a I guess, a viral marketing thing. And uh, I think he interned at a place for a while too. And he's learning throughout this process that this industry is a lot harder than just being really psyched about designing clothes. It is super intense. You can ruin literally everybody else's work if you make even the slightest fuck up on your end. It is crucial and it is crushing. This isn't just to say this is only the fashion industry and all. This could be a whole bunch of industries, especially when it's something like in the case of Blue Giant, we're focusing on music. We're making music together. We're performing together at a concert or we're performing with a bunch of other people at a bar. If you screw up your part, everybody else's part is going to get washed out by the fact that you're screwing up. Or it can make their whole group seem really, really bad. The same thing could go for someone like sports. If you're playing basketball and your team is really fucking up, but there's scouts that are trying to look specifically at your plays or whatever, and your whole team loses, that can be really, really bad. Even though you might not have done anything wrong, somebody else on your team doing something wrong could still reflect on you poorly because, I don't know, maybe you weren't able to work together with them is what they determine. You couldn't pick up where they were struggling struggling and so you're kind of like on the hook for it in a way and maybe that kind of sounds unfair but that's how these kind of things work when Miyamoto Dai gets that pro guy who talks to him he's just outright to him he's like yeah you you suck 
there's room for improvement, definitely. You're doing some things right almost by accident. So we're going to be teaching you the fundamentals. We're going to keep you focused on that. And we're going to keep in mind your failures and learn from them. And so he's kind of teaching him these kind of basic things that he probably should have figured out at some point. And maybe he would have figured them out at some point himself. The way he was explaining things and teaching them to him seemed really, really nice and straightforward and seemed to work great for him. And it also kind of works really well for the reader, too, because the reader should not be expected to know about music and jazz while reading this. And so it also provides a very helpful way to teach the reader about some of these concepts that are related to it. While reading this, I couldn't help but think about one of my favorite movies of all time, Whiplash, which is a very different story about getting into jazz. The story is about a drummer. Miles Teller? He's gotten into, like, the intense conservatory school that he wants to go to. He's studying under, like, one of the well-known jazz teacher conductors or whatever the term is. He's studying under him, but he's learned very quickly performing under him is a very, very intense and grueling experience. This is kind of like the polar opposite. It is a very dark movie. In ways, it's also focused on the same kind of things, where it's one character focused on becoming the greatest jazz musician ever. And they're both trying to consider, you know, how much effort they want to put into that. In the case of Blue Giant, it's all about him giving up his time and focusing solely on just doing whatever he can to learn it. But he's doing it more of a freestyle way and then eventually kind of picking up some of the lessons later on, and he's still, like, having a fun time with it the whole time. Whiplash is less about the fun of it, and it's more about sacrificing what you can to be perfect at something and focusing on what you would give up to achieve greatness. And it's very dark because of it, and it makes it super interesting. There's all day where the conductor is being very manipulative, very abusive towards him. He's swapping out other drummers with him just to try to, like, goad him into, like, uh, suffering through more personal training to improve even more, even though, like, the, condu the conductor teacher knows that, like, this other drummer he keeps replacing him with is never really as better than him. He's just using him as a tool to, like, manipulate the main character guy into suffering more in his own solo training. When they perform, he accepts zero fuck-ups, ever. Like, he if you, you fuck up, you just die. You're just gone. You're, you're not, they're, they're not messing with it, all right, at all. In any way, shape, or form, it doesn't matter. You're just done. And one of the big climaxes of the, the movie, I guess, they, they go to perform, and he forgets his drumsticks. He had left him, like, in a, in a rental car somewhere, like, where he got dropped off at, so he had to drive all the way back to get his drumsticks. And it wasn't just a solution where, like, apparently he could just, you know, I'll just use uh, the, the other, the backup drummer's drumstick. No, no, no. He's like, I'm not accepting that. Either your drumsticks or you're not fucking doing this, okay? If you don't have your drumsticks, we're just giving the part to him. He's like, you're not giving my fucking part to him, okay? You're not giving my part to him. So he drives out to go and get his sticks, gets them, and then gets into a car crash on his way back. And it's 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 bad. He still wants to try to play. He wants so much to, like, prove all that he sacrificed, all he's worked for. And yet this conductor guy who's such a massive asshole is, like, making him struggle through all these kind of emotions, and it's, like, so bad for him. Then it goes into a whole deep thing in that movie where like they report the conductor teacher because what he did to him was also something he did to a previous student who ended up killing himself naturally and they wanted this to like be something that he would have to either go to court for or something that would stop him from doing this to other kids because what he's doing to these kids is horrible although one of the points of the movie is that it tries to argue that what he's doing is important towards the message in his mind and in a way this is kind of true some of the ways that he was pushing him to be better if he never did some of those things it would be near impossible for him to ever get to the level that you would expect somebody great to get to and this was added to in like the kind of finale and it's kind of twisted to think that he had to do all this manipulation to get him there but there is a kind of mindset where pushing people to these certain degrees is what gets them to be great at what they do and get them tough and hardened and like get them to to actually learn things in certain ways. I, I don't know how military training works, but I imagine that kind of stuff is like very much common with how it works there. This is just saying, these are two very different sides 
of the initial same coin, I guess, where we, we have these stories of two jazz players that absolutely want to be the best. One of them wants to be the best because he wants, he, he has fun with jazz and he's in love with it and he always has been. The other one wants to be the best because he wants to achieve greatness and he knows he's really good at this and he feels like he can achieve his greatness through this kind of medium. But he's learning firsthand how much sacrifice that kind of entails. It's done in a kind of really realistic way to a certain degree up until we get into the car crashes and all that that's a little although i kind of liked it because it showed like the the nature of like even then in that situation it's still like the world doesn't really care if like you had that kind of situation happen to you your future might still be fucked regardless uh, regardless of asshole conductors that are running the show or not those kind of things can happen to where like you might think oh well that's unfair for my career to be over because i had this one car accident i mean that happens all the time one car accident could screw up the one opportunity for you to perform in front of the one person that might change your life might take you in and might make your career in this kind of thing and this doesn't really pertain to just jazz this can pertain to a whole bunch of things right or that car accident fucks up your hand and you can never play at least not as good as you were before whereas with blue giant we don't really have that intense kind of energy at least not from what i read so far and it doesn't feel like at all that it would get to that point uh, it definitely feels like there's emotional beats to it deep personal journey and coming of age kind of vibes with it he's not sure exactly what he wants to do in the future like if he wants to go to school for his saxophone or if he wants to like uh, just do part-time job or if he just wants to pursue being a musician right now like he he's not exactly sure what he wants to do yet Yet. He just knows he loves jazz and he wants to devote every day towards it. And right now with the pro training, he seems to be focusing on like the basics of it. And he doesn't seem to be a complete asshole. He sees the potential in him, sees that he's trying to learn things on his own, but that there was like definitely some things that he can improve on. And he's kind of approaching it in a more fundamental kind of sense. Because he, he understands that once he learns these fundamentals, this kid will absolutely take these fundamentals to heart and massively improve improve as a result. All it takes is him learning that kind of stuff in a way that allows him to still enjoy what he's doing and not have it be too like institutionalized for him to like become a big thing. And one of the things I remembered as a part of the section of this manga is it looks like it was kind of a almost a, a post-documentary kind of like manga panels where like it seemed like it was interviewing some people that he had played with, the the people he did his first gig with. It seemed like it was interviewing them almost as if, you know, later on in life he's going to become great and all these people will be looking back towards him and his career. I really like how it was framing that kind of thing. And this series has been announced recently that it was getting a anime movie adaptation. And that kind of thing seems like it's going to be like really, really cool if it does it in that kind of style. It seems like it's almost going to be like maybe an anime documentary about this musician. I don't know if he's based on a real Japanese jazz musician, but it'd be really, really cool if it's told in the style of like an anime documentary about this jazz musician. That'd be pretty fucking cool. So yeah, Blue Giant is fucking great. I love it so far. I absolutely love it. I, I think once I'm done reading this, I'm gonna be ordering when, when I can, I'm going to be ordering the other manga omnibuses for it because it's, it's, it's really, really good. I am super enjoying the messages we're portraying. I, I like the art with his expressions specifically with, with my boy die, just jazzing out and smiling, having a good time, but also like getting really intense and passionate about like being determined with what he's going to do. So that's my little ramble about Blue Giant. If you have not experienced this series yet, I highly recommend it. Even if you don't care at all about jazz, if you care at all about growth and chasing your dreams and th the different messages that can go along with those kind of stories, I highly highly recommend it so yeah blue giant go go pick it up go check it out when the movie drops go watch it that's all for this ramble i don't know if i'm gonna upload it if you enjoy this ramble make sure to like comment subscribe all that fun stuff and if you liked this kind of video and you want more of it let me know in the comments below and i'll see what i can ramble about next if you have a topic you would like me to ramble about let me know and i'll do what i can